Steve Donziger was on uh, uh, on on your show, uh, know me a, a couple of weeks ago. We had him on a, a week ago. Wait, we had him on just last Friday on this show. He had uh, his first uh, hearing of his uh, court case yesterday. Here is uh, my old pal from Air America, Ron Kuby, um, uh, is representing him. Uh, here he is out in front of the court. He is, um, uh, here's uh, Kuby. As my great mentor, the wonderful and much lamented William Kunstler once yeah. said, history too will have its say. Yes. And when that history is written, when that history is understood, whether it's next year or a decade or a generation from now, history will show who the real criminals That's were here. Right. And they're the Chevron Corporation, they're armies of lackeys and toadies and bootlickers, and they will be condemned by the verdict of history. Yep. Yep. Uh, this, you know, we, we got into this, um, um, uh, a little bit with, um, with Nora Erekat, um, but this is these movement attorneys, they will use these cases as a, uh, to service, not just, you know, uh, d furthering certain principles in the law, but, uh, it will, we use these cases as tent poles for broader movements. What Chevron did in this situation is just, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary both. It's extraordinary both in terms of of what they did um, uh, that 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 they were found to owe the Ecuadorian people billions of dollars, but also what they did in um, what they were able to do in the corruption in the context of our federal judiciary. Uh, that y you've got you've got basically a corporate law firm deputized to harass the lawyer who is going to represent these people. I mean, it's, it's, it's stunning. It really is a stunning uh, situation. People should go back and listen to that interview and, and, and look at Nomi's as well. Uh, but um, I'm really shocked about it. I, you know, I, it's interesting because like over the last week, I've, I interviewed a well, week and a half, Stephen, and then I interviewed a political prisoner in Puerto Rico who um, was part of the independence movement with uh, 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 Pedro Abizo Campos, who's a big independence leader who was put in prison for years. Um, and this guy is named Don Heriberto, who was in jail for 17 years. And then uh, two days ago, I interviewed Oscar Lopez Rivera, who was in jail for 36 years of his life, four years in solitary confinement, uh, you know, <laughs> for nothing. Sedition is what they called it, but he wasn't involved in any sort of terrorist activity or anything. And there's just this, this, it's, it, it, the time periods are different. So Don Heriberto got, um, it was put in jail in the 60s, Oscar Lopez Rivera, 1981, and Stephen is on house arrest. Uh, but you see the evolution of how corporate America, essentially, and the themes that it all centers around corporate America, the evolution of how they basically uh, create political situations, political prison. I, I don't know what the future of that is, but it's, it's, it's dehumanizing, it's harsh, it's it's frustrating, and I don't know where we end up going. Um, but to see something like Stephen's case, which is so egregious and so in your face, just like Oscar's case was so in your face, just like Tony Roberto's case was so great. The, the whole world knows it's unjust, but yet these major corporations, whether it's uh, a sugar company or uh, the CIA or, or all of these together or, or Chevron, um, I don't know. I mean, what is it going to take for political prisoners not to put po po people who step out with courage and just fight the system to not be I mean, who go that far to not be held as political prisoners or run? I know you work on this a lot. So go no, I mean, it's, it's, it, it takes one set of rules for companies and for people. We just live in a world where <laughs> the corporations can sort of, you know, just flow in a way that people can't. And so therefore, there's always going to be this disconnect between uh the way that a corporation needs to act in its own or needs to wants to act in its own self interest uh, and the local authorities when local authorities don't have power over anything it, it's there's no sheriff of multi multinational town and, and we shouldn't be surprised at the result yep. so it's going to take a fundamental rethinking of that and I'm not sure uh, I'm not sure that 
you know, that's a generational, like we can all smoke pot thing once a couple people die. I think this is a much, a much deeper sickness.